burglary. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. I'm just asking for hearsay. I think it is improper to ask that kind of question. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard that question. To your own knowledge, did you have any information about a burglary? Objection vague. Sustained. How did Gary Matthews make his living? Objection sustained. To your knowledge, had the decedent, David Roberts, ever given any information to the police department? Not to my knowledge, no, but some people thought. Objection. Just a second. Just a second. You answer the question, please. May that last portion be stricken, please? The latter will go out. You indicated that David Roberts had quite a few enemies. Objected to. Sustained. And do you know any of the people that were quarreling or had anything against Mr. David Roberts? Objected to as assuming facts not in evidence. Sustained. Have you ever heard a threat against Mr. Roberts' life? No, never. And did you tell him that if he didn't pay you the money by the next day, the 25th, that he would not make it until the 26th of August? I probably did say something like that. You said that, didn't you? Yes. What did you mean by that statement? I don't know. I just meant that he'd be in trouble. In trouble? You were threatening him, weren't you, with something serious, a beating or something worse? No, I just, I meant that I intended to get my money from that. And you gave your statement to Sergeant DeWitt. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Did he come out and talk with you? Yes, he did. Where were you when he came and talked with you? Wait, I went in and talked with him, but a card was left at my mother's house and I was in Boys Republic. What is that? A card from the detectives by Sergeant Sloan. What is Boys Republic? Objection sustained. <clears throat> Mr. Parks, you understand that you are still under oath? Yes. Just to refresh the jury's recollection, please state your full name. Kevin Parks. Thank you. Now, Mr. Parks, did you know the deceased David Ray Roberts? Yes, I did. I should like to show you some photographs. These are people's one for identification. Do these photographs depict David Ray Roberts? Yes, I have seen them before. Directing your attention to August 24, 1967. Did you at some time on that day have a conversation with the defendant, Mr. Blake? Yes, I did. Approximately what time did this conversation take place? It was in the evening about 6.30 or 7, I guess. And where did this conversation take place? At my mother's house at 1907 Hillcrest Drive. Did Mr. Blake come over to that address? Yes, he did. As best you can recall the conversation, would you relate it to us? Well, we were just talking general things for a couple of minutes, and then I asked him if Dave Roberts was going to pay me some money that he owed me, and he just said, well, you'll probably never see Dave or the money again. All right. Mr. Parks, after Mr. Blaine made this statement to you, that you'd never see Dave or the money again, did you ask Mr. Blaine any further questions about what he meant? Yeah. I said it jokingly, why? Did somebody shoot him? And then he said, no, but he's planning to leave town. Did you ask him any further questions about Dave? I don't remember asking him anything else. I have nothing else. Very well, Mrs. Patterson, you may cross-examine. Mr. Parks, were you aware that Mr. Roberts was going to leave town? Yes, I had heard it from several people. Did you know where he was going? No, I didn't. How much money did he owe you? It was over, it was just over $150. I'm not sure of the exact figure. Are you sure it wasn't more like $1,000? No, I don't think it came to that. And did you know that David Roberts and Mr. Blaine had been living together off and on? Yes. And did you know they were friends? Yes, I did. In fact, at one point, objection, no question pending. Just answer the questions, please. All right. You didn't care for Dave Roberts, did you? No, I didn't. Had you made any threats on Dave Roberts' life yourself? No, not actually a threat on his life, but I was going to get in a fight with him at one time when Jim Blaine broke it up. So you got into a fight with Dave Roberts? No, he didn't say that, Mrs. Patterson. Not into a fight? No. No, but I was about to fight with him. To your knowledge, did Jim Blaine protect David Roberts on other occasions? Yes. A lot of people were beginning to dislike Dave because he was taking advantage of everyone, borrowing money and not paying it back. Had you ever seen Jim Blaine with any type of gun or weapon? No, I didn't. But were you aware of David Roberts' dealings with a man named Gary Matthews? I knew they were acquainted. Were you aware or did you know that Gary Matthews had planned some type of a burglary? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Just asking for hearsay. I think it is improper to ask that kind of question. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard that question. To your own knowledge, did you have any information about a burglary? Objection vague. Sustained. How did
did Gary Matthews make his living? Objection. Sustained. And to your knowledge, had the decedent, David Roberts, ever given any information to the police department? Not to my knowledge, no, but some people thought. Objection. Just a second. Just a second. You answer the question, please. May that portion be stricken, please. The latter will go out. You indicated that David Roberts had quite a few enemies objected to sustained. Do you know any of the people that were quarreling or had anything against Mr. David Roberts? Objected to as assuming facts not in evidence sustained. Have you ever heard a threat against Mr. Roberts' life? No, never. Did you tell him that if he didn't pay you the money by the next day, the 25th, that he would not make it until the 26th of August? I probably did say something like that. You said that, didn't you? Yes. What did you mean by that statement? I don't know. I just meant that he'd be in trouble. In trouble? You were threatening him, weren't you, with something serious, a beating or something worse? No, I just, I meant that I intended to get my money from them. And you gave your statement to Sergeant DeWitt. Is that correct? Yes, I did. And did he come out and talk with you? Yes, he did. Where were you when he came and talked with you? Wait, I went in and talked with him, but a card was left at my mother's house and I was in Boys Republic. What is that? A card from the detectives by Sergeant Sloan. What is Boys Republic? Objection sustained. Direct examination by plaintiff's attorney. <clears throat> Mr. Parks, you understand that you are still under oath? Yes, just to refresh the jury's recollection. Please state your full name, Kevin Parks. Thank you. Now, Mr. Parks, did you know the deceased David Ray Roberts? Yes, I did. I should like to show you some photographs. These are people's one for identification. Do those photographs depict David Ray Roberts? Yes, I have seen them before. Directing your attention to August 24, 1967. Did you, at some time on that day, have a conversation with the defendant, Mr. Blaine? Yes, I did. Approximately what time did this conversation take place? It was in the evening, about 6.30 or 7, I guess. And where did this conversation take place? At my mother's house at 1907 Hillcrest Drive. Did Mr. Blaine come over to that address? Yes, he did. As best you can recall the conversation, would you relate it to us? Well, we were just talking general things for a couple of minutes, and then I asked him if Dave Roberts was going to pay me some money that he owed me, and he just said, well, you'll probably never see Dave or the money again. All right, Mr. Parks, after Mr. Blaine made this statement to you that you'd never see Dave or the money again, did you ask Mr. Blaine any further questions about what he meant? Yeah, I said jokingly, why? Did somebody shoot him? Then he said no, but he's planning to leave town. Did you ask him any further questions about Dave? I don't remember asking him anything else. I have nothing else. Very well, Mrs. Patterson, you may cross-examine. Mr. Parks. Were you aware that Mr. Roberts was going to leave town? Yes, I had heard it from several people. Did you know where he was going? No, I didn't. How much money did he owe you? It was over, it was just over $150. I'm not sure of the exact figure. Are you sure it wasn't more like $1,000? No, I don't think it came to that. And did you know that David Roberts and Mr. Blaine had been living together off and on? Yes. And did you know they were friends? Yes, I did. In fact, at one point, objection, no question pending. Just answer the question, please. All right. You didn't care for Dave Roberts, did you? No, I didn't. Had you made any threats on Dave Roberts' life yourself? No, not actually a threat on his life, but I was going to get in a fight with him at one time when Jim Blaine broke it up. So you got into a fight with Dave Roberts? No, he didn't say that, Mrs. Patterson. Not into a fight? No. No, but I was about to fight with him. To your knowledge, did Jim Blaine protect David Roberts on other occasions? Yes. A lot of people were beginning to dislike, dislike Dave because he was taking advantage of everyone, borrowing money and not paying it back. Had you ever seen Jim Blaine with any type of gun or weapon? No, I hadn't. Were you aware of David Roberts' dealings with a man named Gary Matthews? I knew they were acquainted. Were you aware or did you know that Gary Matthew had planned some type of a burglary? Answer yes. <laughs> Mr. Parks, you understand 
that you are still under oath? Yes. Just to refresh the jury's uh, recollection, please state your full name, Kevin Parks. Thank you. Now, Mr. Parks, did you know the deceased David Ray Roberts? Yes, I did. I should like to show you some photographs. These are people's one for identification. Do those photographs depict David Ray Roberts? Yes, I've seen them before. Directing your attention to August 24, 1967, did you at some time on that day have a conversation with the defendant, Mr. Blake? Yes, I did. Approximately what time did this conversation take place? It was in the evening, about 6.30 or 7. And uh, where did this conversation take place? At my mother's house at 1907 Hillcrest Drive. Did Mr. Blake come over to that address? Yes, he did. As best you can recall the conversation, would you relate it to us? Well, we were just uh, talking general things for a couple of minutes, and then I asked him if Dave Roberts was going to pay me some money that he owed me, and he just said, well, you'll probably never see Dave or the money again. Okay. Two hundred, four boys, fifteen minutes. <coughs> Starts with question by defense attorney. <coughs> now, Mr. Todd, when you were placed in the back seat of the police car, where was the tape recorder placed? I have no idea, really. You never saw the tape recorder? No, I never saw it. And you never had any idea that your conversation was being recorded? No, I didn't. Were you ever told that you had been placed under arrest? No, I wasn't. Were you ever given? Not until after they took me to the doctor's office after I got down there. Did you ask them why you were being placed in the police car? You didn't think you were going on a sightseeing tour of the city, did you? I asked them why. What did they tell you? Shut up. Anything else? That is all. Were you ever, prior to being taken to the doctor, were you ever given any warnings about any rights to remain silent or any other rights? No, I was never given my rights. After being placed in the police car, you were taken to a hospital. Is that correct? Yes, sir. When you were in the hospital, was any consent ever asked of you for any medical procedures at all? No, sir. They just asked me to get on the table after my brother got off. They had to sew up his eye. One of the policemen had hit him with a flashlight or something. Were you still drunk at this time? Yes. Was your brother asked to sign a consent? I don't really know. I never asked him about it. What had you had that caused you to become intoxicated? At that time, all I had had is beer. How much beer? A whole lot. I started drinking about 11.30 in the morning. And this was what time at night? They picked me up at 2 o'clock, but I had gone home and slept for about three or four hours. How many beers did you have? I couldn't say. Well, approximately how many? Do you remember? I would say approximately 15. That is draft beer glasses. All right, anything else? No. Were you able to walk? Yes, I had had some diet pills that this girl had given me, which showed up in my doctor's report. What kind of diet pills? She just told me it would help me to sober up a little bit. I don't know what kind they were. They were purple, purple, right. Pills or capsules, capsules. And how many of those did you take? Two. What else did you have? That was it. Were you able to stand up? Yes, I was able to stand up. I will admit I was slurring and staggering a little bit, but I could stand up. Yes, all right. Now, after they placed you on the table, what was the next procedure? What happened to, to you? They pumped my stomach. How did they do that? Well, as far as I remember, they got a thing with a long tube on it, about so long, and if I am correct, it had like a ball on top of it that they squeezed. Did they put the tube down your throat? Yes. And into your stomach? Yes. And then they squeezed some medicine in it? Yes. Was this painful to you? Yes, it was painful. As drunk as I was, it was pretty painful. Do you have any idea how long the tube was left inside? Not to say definitely, no. About how long? I would say about two minutes. Now, did you vomit directly after the tube was taken out? No, after they took the tube out, they told me to sit down and they made me start drinking some kind of medicine. After they took the tube out and you vomited, did you feel nauseous at that time? Yes, I did feel nauseous. What was the next step that they took? 
And they told me to sit down, and I sat down, and they gave me some kind of medication to drink, and I drank. I don't know how many cups of this and at least 15 or 20 cups of water. They gave you some cups of medicine to drink, right? And you were still feeling nauseous at this time? Yes, well, whatever they were giving me for medicine was making me nauseous. Then they told you to drink some water? Yes. How many cups of water did they tell you to drink? I would say approximately 20 cups, the little paper cups. And you were feeling sick all during this whole time? Yes, I was feeling very sick. Did you vomit directly after drinking all this water? No. One of the officers said something about, stick your finger. Do you want me to stop there? Yes, while you were drinking this water, did you make any requests of the police officer, a request to urinate? Yes, I asked him if I could go to the bathroom. Did they allow you? No. And you were nauseous all during this period? Yes, sir. About how long would you say this whole process of drinking the water and waiting for you to vomit took? Maybe an hour and a half. And you still hadn't vomited? No. What was the next procedure? Shall I go into that now? Yes. Well, one of the officers told me to take a seat, and I took a seat. And he told me, he said, drink this. And I don't remember how many cups they gave me of this medication, but I drank it. And then they would wait a while, you know, and then nothing would happen and then they would start feeding me water i had like about 20 cups of water and i still hadn't thrown up or nothing and so they asked me if i would stick my finger down my throat did you say yes at that point i said there is no reason to i said i don't have nothing and then he had one of the officers now it isn't the officer that is present but one of the officers in there do you want me to stop? Go ahead. One of the officers in there said that if I did not do it, that he was going to send the doctors out of the room and make sure that I'd done it. Did he threaten to beat you? What? Did he threaten to beat you? He said he would slap the, you know. I don't want to say it in a courtroom. Did you then stick your finger down your throat? Yes. Under this threat? Right. Did you then throw up? Yes. In that short period, how many times did you throw up while you were in the hospital? I think it was just, you mean out of the hospital or in the hospital? In the hospital, twice I think. You continued to feel sick and nauseous and weak all during this time. I felt real sick like I had had the flu or something. Then you were taken to the jail, is that correct? Yes. Did you continue to throw up in jail? Yes, quite frequently. Did you have the dry heaves? Yes. Throwing up with nothing in your stomach? Yes. How many times would you estimate that you threw up or attempted to throw up? At least five or six times. And did you feel sick and weak and nauseous all during this time? Actually, I did until a couple of days afterwards. Did you have any other physical problems or complaints at the jail or did you have diarrhea? Well, yes, I had diarrhea. And how long did this condition last? Just until the next morning when daylight came and we got up for breakfast. Then the next morning after I ate, and then it kept continuing and continuing until I had nothing to throw up and had the dry heaves. The essence of your testimony is that for over approximately six hours until you were fed, and that you felt sick, nauseous, and weak, and had the dry heaves and continually vomiting? Yes. No further questions. You say you were still drunk when you got to the hospital, Mr. Todd? Yes. Now that means that you were drunk at the time that you were taken into custody by the officers, is that right? Yes. Were you getting drunker between the time you were taken into custody by the officers and the time you got to the hospital? No, I wasn't at that time. You weren't getting any more intoxicated? No. Were you getting less drunk? Yes, actually I was. Now you said you drank about 15 beers that day? Yes, maybe more or less. Maybe more or less? Yes. And you had taken a couple of diet pills? Yes. Wasn't there one other item of intoxicant that you took that you forgot to tell us about? Yes, sir, there was. What was that? One second off. One, one. Wasn't there something besides that one second all that you took? No, sir. 
Didn't you swallow a bag with 25 second alls? Yes, sir, I thought this was already out in the open. Yes, I did swallow a whole bag. Did you have any idea what that might do to you? I had no idea even what was in the bag. You had taken second alls before, but you had no idea what this stuff was in the bag. I went out with my brother just to go out drinking and shooting pool, and I told him, I said, I don't want to be fooling around with drugs. I don't want you to have nothing in the car because I am always getting pulled over in Hollywood on account of my car looks so raggedy. And he said, okay. When we did get pulled over, he passed me this bag. He said, get rid of it. And that is what I done. I swallowed it, but really I didn't know. You didn't know what it was. I did not know that that is what he had. Did you think it was candy? No. I knew it was some kind of narcotic because it was in a plastic bag. They always put it in plastic bags, but I figured the officers would hold us for 15 or 20 minutes and let us go, and I would stick my finger down my throat and throw up. You intended to do just exactly what you did down at the hospital. Stick your finger down your throat and throw up the baggie full of second alls whatever the narcotic was that you had. Well, on account of the, that is what you intended to do, wasn't it? Right. That was because you were afraid that those things might kill you if they stayed inside? Yes. You did have a conversation with your brother in the car regarding your consumption of various pills that day. Did you not? The only thing he talked about was second alls. After you told him that you had swallowed these pills, didn't he recite the number of various kinds of drugs that you had consumed that day? I will object to that. Hearsay. No, he did not. Don't answer the question. He has already answered it. All right. Didn't you then tell him what you had consumed that day? I told him I had taken a couple of uppers and he knew he had had one second all. You call these uppers. That is a term that means pill, isn't it? Right. You really knew that these purple pills, what would you call the second alls? Downers? Yes. When you got to the hospital, did the doctor ask you what you had consumed? I do not remember if he asked me or not. Were you pretty close to being unconscious by the time you got to the hospital? No. You were pretty drunk still? Yes, but not near as drunk as I was when they picked me up. When did you first learn that you were going to be required to regurgitate what you had swallowed? After they had sewed up my brother's eye, who told you that they were going to have to vomit that up? Well, nobody told me I would have to vomit it up. So they told me I would have to get up on the table and I told them I wasn't hurt. Did someone ask you whether you had swallowed some reds? I don't recall that either. Who was present when you were told that you would have to get up on the table? The doctor, my brother, and two or three other officers, who told you to get up on the table? <clears throat> I believe the doctor did. I am not sure. And did you comply with his instructions? Yes. I told him that I wasn't hurt, that I didn't get in a fight with the police. You told them you weren't hurt, but you didn't tell them, I don't want to get on the table. Yes, I think I told them that too. You said you didn't want to get on the table. What did he do? They told me that I had to, and they didn't have no type of signature or information or nothing, and that I had to get up there. Who said that to you? It was one of the officers and the doctor there. I can't remember which officer, but there was two or three officers. And the doctor repeated what the officer said. Yes, I believe he did. The officer said, you have to get up on the table and we don't need no signature. Well, I had asked about the signature thing and they told me that they needed no signature. Who told you that? Who told me that? Who told you that you didn't need a signature? It was one of the officers. And the doctor repeated this, I do not recall. Did you then yourself climb onto the table? Yes, I did. Did anyone push you or twist your arm or hit you? No. You voluntarily, having been told that no signatures were required, got up onto the table? Yes. And then did you sit on the table or lie on the table? What did you do? They made me get up and sit down and lie down, and then they proceeded. Did you lie back 
without anyone forcing you to do so? Yes, sir. And then after you lay back on the table, what did the doctor do next? He got a tube about this long, like a rubber tube, indicating about, I beg your pardon, 18 inches, Your Honor. Yes, somewhere around there. Go ahead. And it had a big ball on the end of it, something to a bulb. Yes. Did the doctor tell you to swallow the tube? No, he told me to open my mouth and put the tube down my mouth. Did you open your mouth and put the tube down your mouth? Yes. You didn't resist? You didn't tell him you didn't want to? No, I didn't. I told him I didn't want to have my stomach pumped. When did you tell him you didn't want to have your stomach pumped? When they first started asking me about it, I said that I had signed it nothing and they had no reason to go through with it. When they first started asking you about it, and you understood that you were going to have your stomach pumped. Did they tell you why they were going to pump your stomach? Yes, they said they had some idea that I had swallowed something. They said nothing about the tape recorder at this time. Who said he had an idea that you had swallowed something? I believe that was one of the arresting officers. Did the doctor say anything about that? No. Did you tell him you had not swallowed anything? Yes. You said you had swallowed nothing? Right. To whom did you say that? To the doctor and to the officers. In other words, you didn't say simply that you hadn't been in a fight, but you said you had swallowed nothing? Right. What did the doctor do in response to that? That is when they went to carry on with the rest of the procedure. What did he do? Um, what was he doing when you told him you had swallowed nothing? The doctor. Well, nothing. He was just listening to what the officers told him to do. Is this before he told you to swallow the tube? I don't really remember. You told the doctor that you had nothing and he went on as if you had said nothing at all. Is that right? Yes, I believe so. He just went on doing what the officer told him to do. What the officer told him to do? Yes. He was apparently acting on their instructions? Yes. Now, did this cause you great pain when this tube went down your throat and your stomach? Oh yes, it did hurt. Did it cause great pain? Yes, it did at first. Where did it hurt? Right as they started coming down right about here. It felt like it was going down to my feet. It hurt about the middle of your chest? Right. At the time that he inserted the tube into your mouth, did you tell him don't do that? No, I didn't. Question by plaintiff's attorney, 184 words for five minutes. <clears throat>